So, Tottenham Hotspur want to sign Issa Diop from us, from West Ham. But you can't have him. He's not for sale. Well, not for you lot, anyway. Particularly not to you lot. They don't want to sign him, by the way. They want to sign him, but they're saying, oh, we'll have him, but we're not paying all that. We're not, we're not paying what you want. We'll, we'll pay what we want. We'll put the value on him. We'll sign him for that. No, you won't. Jog on. Quite frankly, I thought you were skint anyway. You know? Can't pay for the stadium. Can't pay the repayments of the stadium. Can't pay the maintenance staff. Can't pay the cleaners. Can't do all that. Oh, but you've got quite a few million to buy Issa Diop. Not the 60 million or the 50 million that we want. They might be out of stretch of 25 million. Oh, you've got 25 million pound, have you? Oh, that's nice. That's nice. I, ju I just don't understand. They were pleading the paupers not too long ago. Now they've got money to start splashing around. Man United, no, 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 you can't have any Harry Kane for 200 million. Oh, but we'll have the West Ham's player at half the price. No, you won't. They've got this um, They've got this stadium to pay for. When they build in this stadium, a large part of the stadium build was financed off the back that, of the, that they might have NFL, that they might have gridiron football in there. American football, sorry. Um, I think it was the Jacksonville Jaguars were meant to play four or five games in the Tottenham Stadium in Three Point Lane. They were meant to play. They were meant to play there each time, whatever, four or five times a year. That was going to yield a decent income stream, which was going to help them pay off the stadium. The stadium part of that stadium was actually designed so as you could fit an American football team in. They have very large benches, as you know. Defense, offense. There's there's millions of people on the bench. Lots big old squads. All right. They've got a bigger squad than Man City, NFL teams. So, that money's not going to come in anymore, is it? There's no money to come in. Because obviously the NFL aren't over. The NFL ain't even playing over in America. Never mind over here. That's going to go. So that revenue streams are saying, oh, oh, you know, poor us. Poor Tottenham, we've got no money. Well, you're not coming taking our players. No. I'm not saying he ain't for sale at any price. Gio likes to always say every player's got his price. I get it. I understand that. But sometimes you've got to pick and choose who you sell to. So, you know, you don't sell to your rivals, do you? Celtic don't sell to Rangers. I know it's slightly different. But I think bearing in mind, let's be fair, Daniel Levy has, has not got the best relationship with the West Ham United owners. I'm not sure what I can say or what I shouldn't say. But if you Google Daniel Levy, Karen Brady, private investigator, go and go and read that. Go and read that for a story. My point is you shouldn't really be doing business with them. And didn't somebody say at some point we will not do business with Tottenham again? I'll tell you a little story. Because I've got nothing better to do, quite frankly. Um, my, my mate Jamie, who I work with, he came into work one day and he had a pram. And it had one of those carry cots that you clip in the pram. The thing was worth about 300 quid. So what you got that with you for? His daughter had outgrown it. He said, oh, I'm, I'm selling it. He said, I'm selling it on Facebook. Um, he said, the guy's coming down to pick it up off me. The guy turned up. And uh, anyway, the guy turned up and he said, oh, I'll, uh, I'll give you 30 quid for it. And Jamie turned around and said, 30 quid? No, we agreed 50 quid on Facebook last night. He said, yeah, yeah, I know, but I've only got 30. He said, hold on, you already haggled me down from 70 last night. And he said, well, I've got 30. And Jamie said, no, you're not having it for 30. And it was quite funny because they were outside of the house where we were doing a building work. And there was these two grown men fighting, basically pulling, <laughs> pulling this carry cot thing with wheels on it. Anyway, the guy turned around and he said, I'll give you 40 quid. Jamie said, no, it's 50 quid. Anyway, the guy said, come on, oh, come on. I've driven all the way from Hounslow, the guy said. Driven away from Hounslow, come on. What about my petrol? And Jamie said, no, it's it's a £300 buggy. You ain't having it. Give me 50 quid. So the guy said, no, no, 45. Jamie said, no, that's it. You're not having it. You're definitely not having it. Give it here. He yanked it back off him. The guy got out 50 quid. He said, OK, here's your 50 quid. Jamie said, no, you're not having it now. I'm done. I'm just not selling it to you. And the guy said, OK, I'll give you 55. Said, no, you're not having it. You're not having it. He said, I'd rather chuck it in the skip than give it to you. Anyway, it's a silly story. Got nothing to do with football. I'm just saying, under some circumstances, it ain't worth paying. There's no worth accepting money. Off of the wrong, the wrong punter. And Tottenham are very much definitely the wrong punter. 
They ain't got the money for Issa Diop. I don't care. I, I, look, I don't care whether they're skin or whatever. They, they're not taking the money off the government to pay their staff now. That's the right thing to do. But don't come to us, say we're going to have your player for half price after pleading the Portma. No. No, don't do business with them at all.